Going back to the beginning of the New Testament, there has always been contention between two groups within Christianity. One group says man and God work together with the emphasis on free will, man's freedom. This is called synergism. The second group states that man's free will is in compliance with God's decreed will. This view states that God has a plan and that plan will be accomplished. God will use the believer to accomplish his will. This is monergism. God alone without influence from our free will, but rather God working through us. In this video we will explore both sides, we will look at what the Bible says, we will show how the Bible explains the way salvation works. Grab a pen or pencil, get your Bible, and let's dive into this. Let's examine the Arminian view of free will and see if it holds up logically, human choice versus divine foreknowledge. Arminians believe that humans have the free will to choose or reject salvation. But if God has perfect foreknowledge of all events, how can true free will exist? If God knows our choices beforehand, are they truly free? The problem of evil. Arminians argue that much of the world's suffering results from human free will. However, this doesn't account for natural disasters and suffering not caused by human actions. If God is sovereign, why allow such suffering if he could prevent it without infringing on free will? Scriptural tensions. Passages like Romans 9 and Ephesians 1 verses 4 to 5 emphasize God's sovereign choice and predestination. Arminians must reconcile these scriptures with their view of free will. But how can one logically maintain both without contradiction? Salvation assurance. If salvation depends on human choice, can it be lost? This creates uncertainty and potentially undermines the assurance of salvation. How can one be confident in their eternal state if it hinges on human effort? Logical inconsistency. The Arminian view attempts to balance free will with God's sovereignty, but it often leads to logical inconsistencies. How can God be both all-knowing and yet leave human destiny entirely to human choice? A call to reflect. Consider these logical challenges and examine how they align with Scripture. How does your understanding of free will fit with the nature of an all-knowing, sovereign God? In this next section we are going to talk about the order of salvation. What does the Bible say about how salvation works? Both temporally and logically. Temporal order of salvation. The temporal order refers to the sequence of events in the experience of a believer's life. These are the steps as they unfold in real time from a human perspective. Calling. This is when an individual hears the gospel message and is drawn by God to respond. John 6 verse 44. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Regeneration. The Holy Spirit regenerates the heart, enabling a person to have faith and repent. Titus 3 verse 5. He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Conversion. Faith and repentance. The person responds with faith in Christ and repentance from sin. Acts 20 verse 21. Testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance toward God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Justification. Upon faith, God declares the person righteous based on Christ's atoning work. Romans 5 verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Adoption. The justified believer is adopted into God's family. Romans 8 verse 15. But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba. Father. Sanctification. The believer begins the lifelong process of being made holy. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 3. For this is the will of God. Your sanctification. Perseverance. The believer continues in faith, upheld by God's power. Philippians 1 verse 6. He who began a good work and you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Glorification. The believer is fully conformed to the image of Christ at the end of their earthly life. Romans 8 verse 30. Those whom he justified he also glorified. Logical order of salvation. The logical order, on the other hand, refers to the theological or doctrinal order of how these events are interconnected in God's plan. It deals with the cause and effect relationships and the necessity of one event for the next. Foreknowledge and predestination. Before the foundation of the world, God foreknows and predestines those who will be saved. Romans 8 verses 29 to 30. For those whom he foreknew he also predestined. Election. God's choice of individuals for salvation based on his sovereign will. Ephesians 1 verses 4 to 5. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Calling, God's effective summons to the elect, which brings them to faith. John 6 verse 44. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Regeneration, the act of God giving new life to the elect, enabling them to respond in faith. Titus 3 verse 5. 
the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Conversion, faith and repentance The logical response to regeneration is that the individual exercises faith and repentance. Acts 20 verse 21 Repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Justification, upon faith, God legally declares the sinner righteous. Romans 5 verse 1 We have been justified by faith. Adoption, those justified are also adopted into God's family. Romans 8 verse 15 Receive the spirit of adoption as sons. Sanctification begins immediately after justification and adoption, continuing throughout the believer's life. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 3 Your sanctification. Perseverance. The process of being kept in faith and growing in holiness. Philippians 1 verse 6 He will bring it to completion. Glorification. The final step in which believers are given new bodies and are fully conformed to Christ. Romans 8 verse 30 He also glorified. Key differences, temporal order, focuses on the sequence as experienced in real life. Logical order, focuses on the theological and doctrinal progression, explaining how each step happens in relation to God's plan and work. Areas of agreement. Calling. Both Reformed and non-Reformed believers agree that God calls individuals to salvation through the gospel. John 6 verse 44. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Conversion. Faith and repentance both traditions affirm the necessity of faith in Jesus Christ and repentance from sin. Acts 20 verse 21. Testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance toward God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Justification. Both agree that justification is by faith alone and that it results in being declared righteous before God. Romans 5 verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Sanctification. Both affirm that believers undergo a process of being made holy throughout their lives. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 3 For this is the will of God, your sanctification. Glorification Both believe that believers will ultimately be glorified, fully conformed to the image of Christ. Romans 8 verse 30 Those whom he justified he also glorified. Points of contention, foreknowledge and predestination, reformed view, God's foreknowledge and predestination are based on his sovereign will and choice independent of human actions. Romans 8 verses 29 to 30. For those whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. Non-reformed view, foreknowledge is often understood as God foreseeing who will freely choose him, and predestination is based on this foreknowledge. 1 Peter 1 verse 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Election, reformed view, election is unconditional based solely on God's sovereign grace and not on any foreseen faith or merit in the individual. Ephesians 1 verses 4 to 5. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Non-reformed view. Election is conditional, based on God's foreknowledge of who will choose to believe. 2 Peter 3 verse 9. Not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Regeneration. Reformed view. Regeneration precedes faith. The Holy Spirit regenerates a person, enabling them to believe. Titus 3 verse 5. He saved us. By the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Non-reformed view, faith precedes regeneration. A person believes and, as a result, is regenerated by the Holy Spirit. John 1 verses 12 to 13. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Perseverance, reformed view. Those truly saved will persevere in faith to the end kept by God's power. Philippians 1 verse 6. He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Comparison and Discussion How do the different views of regeneration affect the understanding of faith and grace? What are the implications for assurance of salvation and the role of the Holy Spirit? Conclusion Summary We've explored some deep and complex topics today, foreknowledge and predestination, election and regeneration. We've seen how Reformed and non-Reformed perspectives differ significantly in these areas. Encouragement Understanding these differences can deepen our faith and help us appreciate the richness of God's work in salvation, even if we don't agree on every point. Call to action I encourage you to study these topics further, reflect on the scriptures, and seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit in understanding God's marvelous plan of salvation. Closing, final thoughts Thank you for joining me in this exploration of theological perspectives. If you have any questions or would like to dive deeper into these topics, feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more biblical discussions. God bless.